Jan Ozer here. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to use Premiere Pro's multicam feature to edit multiple camera angles. Though Premiere Pro and CS6 can handle unlimited camera angles, most of my productions involve only two or three cameras. We'll be working with a simple three camera shoot. Now, if you're an event shooter and you look at these three clips here, you probably know what they are. This was a two person, three camera shoot. I managed two cameras. One was the static camera from the back. If we click to open this in the source monitor, we see that it never moves. And this is the back camera where I followed the action, but this has the audio coming in from the soundboard. So this is the keeper audio. And then here's the third camera operated from, uh, I guess from the right front, left front if you're looking at the stage. Um, and that was obviously operated by a separate operator. So here's my three clips. Now, if you're working with time code based footage or you're working with footage where you have a very, very good visual cue, say a clapper or something like that, very simple to create a multicam. You just choose your clips and then you come up here and create multi camera source sequence. And here's your multi camera source sequence. And this is a new beast uh, that appeared in CS6. Uh, this was not something that you could do in, in CS 5.5. You still had the options um, that we saw here. Let me go back and cover those because I kind of glossed over them. So if we come here. So if you have, you know, if you know your endpoints are solid, they're, they're perfectly synced, you can, you can use this technique or outpoints or time code. Or if you have a clip marker, say where you have a clapper or some other um, very, very strong visual cue that the uh, the clips are in sync. I don't have that here. So I don't like this approach when I don't have a strong visual cue. I'm going to delete that. The other thing I don't like about this approach is I know I want this file here on video one, audio one, because this is the audio that I want to keep. So I'd rather just build the sync sequence myself. And before I do that, what I did was get them, you know, I got the endpoints pretty close. So here's the point in the concert where the performer asks, are you having a good time? Um, and, and I marked in just before he said that in all three of the clips. So I know I'm pretty close. Here's the mark in on this one. Here's the mark in on this one. So I'm going to create the synchronization sequence by dragging this onto new item here. And that creates a sequence with the file characteristics of the file that I used to create it. And I'm going to call this sync. And then, so here's the back with audio. And again, this is the keeper audio and I want this on audio one. And then from there, it really doesn't matter where you put your other tracks. I'll put front next. And then I will put back with static camera next up here. Now I need to go in to the, uh, to the timeline and synchronize them perfectly. So I'm going to click this panel and then click the tilde key. And what the tilde key does is put that in full screen mode in the interface I'm working with. And now I get really good ability to zoom into my audio tracks. And I want to zoom in temporarily as well. And we can see that they're, you know, they're not even. So let's try and find a distinctive point where, okay, this one, this will get us a little bit close, but it's not the, the one I want to end up using. You want a really sharp, can't miss point in the video captured by all three cameras that, uh, that really lets you know that you're in sync. Because if you blow sync at this point, it's really hard to fix down the road. So let's focus in on this one here. Now I'm going to click this and to move it over, you know, I can drag it, but that's not wonderfully precise. So what I can do is I can hold down the option key and then I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move it a frame at a time. And I can do the same here. So, and if I zoom in, and if I zoom in even closer to get it a bit closer, and then of course you can just play the audio. Okay. Let's bring it up to the, where he's speaking. Okay, you can't hear that that well, but from what I'm hearing, and I'm going to click the tilde key to go back to the original interface, uh, from what I'm hearing, it's pretty close, and then I probably would also want to do a visual. So let me close these audio files and make a little bit more space, drag this down, and 
Okay, let me put this to fit. So let's find a distinct visual. Okay. So there's his hand up there in the peak, and if we, this is from the back static camera. Okay, that looks good from there. That looks good from there. So it looks like we're, you know, we're pretty synchronized. And let's finish the job by coming over here, dragging this over, dragging this over, ripple deleting. So now I've got the endpoint for all three clips where I want them and synchronize. So I'll choose the three clips, choose synchronize, and then choose it based on clip start. Okay, at this point, you'd want to start thinking about color correction and any brightness adjustment that you need to make. And basically, again, you go to a convenient location and, you know, we can see here that this is pretty bright. This is pretty bright. This is a touch, uh, don't want to call it dingy because I shot it, but, you know, probably would brighten that maybe a little bit. Um, you know, it's not tragic. The colors look really good, uh, or, or I guess they look consistent throughout the three shots, but I might brighten that clip. And here's where you want to do it. You want to do it in the sync sequence, not in the edit sequence, because in the sync sequence, you, you only have to do it once. In the edit sequence, you have to do it every time you have that clip in the timeline. So let's call this synced. Now we want to create the edit sequence, and this is the sequence we're going to use to edit the multicam clip. And I do that, I can drag that onto the new item that creates a nested clip using the sync footage, and I'm going to call this edit. Just so I know that's the clip I'm going to edit. And if we look at this in the timeline, there's, um, there's only one track showing. And we right click and choose multicam enable. And now we see that MC1, multicam one, is the uh, track one. Multicam one is track one here as well. This is what we want here. And this is the one that we're going to be changing throughout the, uh, the edit sequence. To edit the multicam, you click window and then multi-camera monitor, and that opens the multicam monitor. A couple things here. Here's the three clips. Um, one, two, three. You know, this is the, uh, uh, the front that I'm following, this is the side camera, this is the back camera. One thing that can happen to you if you're, uh, if you're messing around a lot, you're doing your color correction here, if you leave these not showing, and then you go back to your multi-camera clip, the clips aren't here. Basically, if they're not showing in the source sequence, they're not going to show in the edit sequence. And I can't tell you how many times I've said, holy cow, where are my clips going? And then you enable again, and you synchronize again, and, and basically all it is is that you forgot to enable the tracks here, and then you can see the tracks here. And that's going to happen at, at some point when you're doing this kind of editing, and hopefully that'll help you get it fixed pretty quickly. And then once you got the multi-camera sequence open, uh, it's pretty simple. You, they Official instructions say you've got to click record on, off toggle. Basically, you don't have to. If you click this, um, you accomplish the same thing. You know, choose camera angles as desired. And then once you click the stop key here, you see the multi-camera edits appear in the timeline here. Basically, you can go through the whole clip in real time if you want to do it. But if you're working with, you know, a lot of, a lot of the projects that I shoot, I have two cameras. One is the back camera that's just, you know, if I know I mess up on front, I want to have a back camera there. So I can drag through and I say, okay, I messed up at, at uh, one minute in. Then I'll click C, create a razor blade here then click V again to get back to this. I want to unlink because I want to keep MC1 as my audio track. And then once you're here, you can choose any camera angle that you want. And so I want two, I can get two. If I want three, I can get three. So you can go through using the multicam monitor if you want. Um, but if you want to do it in the timeline, you can do it in the timeline as well. Again, make if you know if you cut through to the audio and the video, make sure that you don't change the audio, make sure that you unlink. Once you're on the timeline, let me close this. Um, if you want to adjust the switching points, you can do it this way. Pretty simple. If you want to change this camera angle here, again, unlink, and then choose whichever camera angle you want. If you want to delete this and say, I just want to use MC1 through the entire 
first few seconds, just make sure you're unlinked on the audio side, and then you can drag this over. A lot of flexibility on the timeline after you use the multicam monitor to actually choose the angles that you want. Once you're done polishing the, uh, the edit sequence in your multi-camera project, you just render it as normal and then you are done. And so am I. So this is how you synchronize your clips in Premiere Pro CS6 and how you edit them using the multi-camera monitor. I'm Jan Ezer. Thanks for watching.